Hey, welcome to Fix It For Josh's Sake. Today I want to tackle a little different subject. I'm not necessarily fixing something as much as I'm uh, discussing and troubleshooting uh, a challenge I had on this bike right here. This is a 1975 Honda Goldwing GL1000. And the challenge this bike had was uh, the spark, the, the coil packs were going out. So these are the old coils, and this is what came stock in the Honda uh, GL1000. The challenge is right now, if you go on eBay and you look for these, they're like $160, and you're not entirely sure if they work, because all the descriptions will be like, pulled off a bike, uh, hope they work, they should be good, and you don't get much confidence. Uh, you can buy... Four pack Dodge Neon Coil, brand new OEM, uh, for like twenty or thirty dollars on eBay right now. So I liked that idea because I had some confidence in its quality. So over here I've got this Dodge Neon Coil. Now this one I pulled from a junkyard, cost me twenty bucks, uh, just to test the concept and make sure it works. Now the one that's in my bike is brand new, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about what you have to do to make sure it works. Uh, when I got this from the junkyard, I got this plug-in. It's got three prongs. You can see them down in the three prongs uh, that go into the coil. You can look over here. You can see the three prongs there. Okay. The key point I want to talk about for plugging the this coil pack into your motorcycle is we've got a center wire that's black and blue, and that's hot. Okay. Goldwing's uh, black wire a lot of times it's the hot wire and so uh, remember that in this wiring system putting these coils in that's going to be the wire that you bring two black wires from here together and run it into the center of this Dodge Neon coil pack. What's also nice about these Dodge Neon coils is they're numbered cylinder one, cylinder four, Cylinder two, cylinder three, and we got our plug-in over here. So uh, on your Goldwing harness, you are going to hook in your yellow and blue wire into this brown and blue wire of the Dodge Neon harness. So essentially, if we're looking at one and four, that will line up with the brown and blue plug-in, and that will be fed by your yellow and blue wire. And then when we're looking at this coil pack, we got two and three. Two and three line up with this orange wire on the Dodge Neon harness. And that orange wire needs to be fed by the blue and white wires wire in your uh, Goldwing wiring harness. So this orange wire needs the blue and white coil wire to come into it. Okay, now that we understand exactly how to plug this in and get proper firing order on a Dodge Neon Coil, this is a uh, 2003 Dodge Neon Coil. A lot of guys are running 2002 Dodge Neon Coils. There's probably a few oddities up and down from those years, but I know the target uh, size that's been working is a 2002-2003 Dodge Neon Coil. But what I wanted to elaborate on is if we look right here on this black and blue wire, uh, you can see it gets a little hot. That's it's starting to it's it's getting so much voltage you can't handle it. And I talked to an electrical engineer friend of mine, and he asked me, "Well, what's the gauge on this?" And I'm like, "Well, it's 20 gauge." And then he said, "Well, what's the gauge on the uh, wiring harness in the bike?" And that's 16 gauge. So I went and got myself some 16 gauge wire here, uh, braided copper wire, and I'm going to go ahead and remove these, solder in some fresh wire with uh, proper connections, and get rid of this limiting factor, because the fact of the matter is, uh, a light bulb, like that one right there, lights up because we're running a large amount of voltage, then through a very small wire, and that makes that wire glow. Well, no wonder uh, this gets a little hot once in a while. There is a restriction there. I've never heard anybody else talk about this. 
Um, so maybe I'm the only one who's uh, noticing the problem. Maybe my bike is running a little different, but the point is I'm going to make sure that I have 16 gauge wire running into this harness, plugging into this coil pack, because that's what's running in my GL1000 wiring harness that's there stock in 1975. In order to get into these terminals in the, or these plugins down inside of there, all three of them, uh, we got to do a couple of things. I got this nice little sharp tool here. And first off, you pop off this back cover and use the tool to work that back. Uh, kind of it clips and snaps on. So that works back. And then what's inside of there is this rubber bushing that goes around the wires and you need to work that back as well. Sharp tool like this works real nice just to pull that out. Once you have this worked back, uh, we can see inside of there from the back side, what you have to do is in the top of the each plug-in, there is a little clip that is pressing down and holding each one of those in place. So uh, if you take your tool and you stick it into the top of each one of those and uh, pry up, you'll be able to pull that clip up and then it pulls right out the back. Pay attention to the orientation of these plugins. They need the rectangle slot to the top because that's where the clips are that you can see in there now. And that's how they grip and hold them in place so they don't slide in or out when you're trying to plug it back into your coil pack over here. It's a bit uh, tricky, but it's not undoable. It's doable. Uh, with a tool like this, sharp little end, you can work into these folded over seams and open those up and pull out those wires so that we can recrimp uh, the 16 gauge wire into these plugins and get them inserted. So I was successful in getting this opened up by using this tool. And so I'll show you how I did it. Now we're obviously throwing these wires away. So uh, I just used it as a good piece of chunk to hold on to. And then I'm gonna take my pointy little tool here and jab it into the collar that is pressed into the uh, press to hold the casing of the wire um, and if you're lucky you can kind of get that to open up and work it open and then see it just presses right through and now we opened up a whole side and I'm gonna do that on the rest of this one and on the rest of this one to at least get ourselves to the point where we are here and in that way we can, uh, if my camera would focus, come on, there we go, like that. Then I'm going to cut this off. Uh, I'm going to cut that wire off right there and solder over top and then clamp this around the wire housing because there's plenty of clearance. I won't have any problem with obstruction or anything like that. And I really don't know how the heck I'm going to get that open to get the rest of the wire out of there. So doing it halfway and then I'm going to solder it, which solder is going to be a really good connection and uh, give us good, good continuity as we are trying to get this coil plugged in and working properly with the points on our motorcycle. All right, I got the three of them opened up using this tool. It worked pretty good. Uh, I just want to state, because I don't want you to forget, please don't shove a tool like this towards yourself, because Lord have mercy, that would probably uh, give you a hole in your hand you don't want. So, like I said, I was holding the wire and pushing out away from myself each time, and uh, it worked really easy to open those up. Just uh, one little detail is make sure that the end of this isn't catching into the second crimped area. you got to come up over top and, and ride away from it as you're uh, breaking these loose. I think I'm to the point where I'm going to cut them off and get my uh, sections of 16 gauge wire ready to solder on. All right, so this is the flux that I have. Uh, I was looking for some rosin 
flux, but uh, I was a little hard pressed to find that here in the cities uh, where I live. It wasn't the easiest thing to find, so I put a little bit on there uh, before I crimped it together. I crimped that end on there. Make sure it focuses here. The camera needs to focus here, and uh, and then. <clears throat> take my soldering iron here. And I'm also using rosin core uh, solder, but I find that I need to use a little flux to help this uh, help this process go along for me. So I heat it up for a minute, and then I just bring my solder in here and kind of fill up the, the gap there, let everything cover over, and we're good. Voila. All right, now that we got these ends soldered on here and we've got this here, these three rectangle slots need to point up so that when you look in there, you see those clips and they'll grab into those slots and hold them in. So, see if I can gently stick those in there and get them to line up. Okay, and once you got those shoved in there really nice, you can see them, there's the silver of them on the inside. And we got to work this rubber gasket in. Let's push that in. Make sure that goes in all the way. Everything's staying in there. And then we've got this final clip. Uh, let's see. Looks like this. And that comes over top. It's going to clip everything into place. Like that. Sorry, that was a little clumsy, but I think you get the idea. And that clip is on there. The pins are in there. Everything's soldered. Now, I'm going to grab some of my electrical tape here. And I'm going to properly uh, color code each wire so that when we go and plug it back into the bike, we got what we need. So let me show you where I'm at now. We've got the wires ran in. We've got the plugs inside of there, and I've got this labeled as my yellow and blue wire. It's going to connect to the harness uh, yellow and blue wire on the gold wing. Got our center wire, which will run two black wires. These are, this is the hot wire. And then we've got our blue and white wire, which will connect to the blue and white wire on the harness. And that comes over, connects in like that, clips into place, bada boom. Now we got ourselves 16 gauge wire that is equivalent to the rest of the harness in that gold wing uh, wiring harness. And we shouldn't have any hot spots or any points of, of fatigue as everything feeds into this plug-in. Well, I thought I was doing so good, but this gold wing wiring can sure be confusing. I elaborated in my video earlier about how important it was to have the brown wire connected to the yellow wire and the orange wire connected to the blue wire and all that. And This is how I labeled it and it's labeled correctly to what I was telling you earlier. And unfortunately, when we come up here and we turn the key on like we need to, do you hear that? Well, that's because those wires are crossed. So now coming back down here, you see I have the yellow wire going to what would have been the blue and white wire. And I have the blue wire going to the yellow and blue wire. And then we can come up here and can turn the key on. And so there you have it. That schematic and the uh, stuff I was reading and the forums and stuff. Uh, they're, they're probably right. <laughs> this motorcycle's had some wiring uh, problems along the way that I've always been trying to fix. So going back to the coil here on my workbench, uh, sometimes a guy's got to admit, you know, I don't know everything, or maybe I'm eating a little crow, but I know that on the forums I was reading, the wiring color connection that I gave you guys were correct. The schematic showed that, but on my motorcycle... The brown wire has to go to the blue with a little yellow stripe wire. And on my motorcycle, the orange wire needs to go to the yellow wire with the little blue stripe. <sighs> Is my bike wrong? 
Is the information out there on the forums wrong? I don't know. The easy fix, though, is just flip your wires, keep your constant, you're hot, you're hot. And, uh, man, I am really happy with this Dodge Neon Coil Pack in my uh, Goldwing. So don't be discouraged by my little challenge. Rather be empowered and understand that, hey, if you got the yellow on the blue or the blue on the yellow or the brown on the blue or the brown on the yellow, whatever, you're going to figure it out. You're just going to flip it around. It basically just kind of misfires and never really runs. You flip it around and it's like, wahoo, we got fresh spark coming to these spark plugs from this really nice hot coil pack. So I consider this a win. Hey, thanks for following along as uh, I tackled the project here on this, this Goldwing. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments, your input, your thoughts on this Dodge Neon coil switch. Have you had good experiences with it? Have you wanted to try it? Do you think it's not worth it? Uh, yeah, go ahead and comment. If you liked what, I, uh, what I'm doing here on my channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm posting stuff all the time. I'm always working on stuff, you know. I really enjoy fixing it for Josh's sake. Have a great day.